Hi, in this video we will learn about the design steps for synchronous finite state machines. So, what is a finite state machine? Well, previously we have looked at combinational logic circuits in which the output is dependent only on the present values of the inputs. We have also learned that flip-flops change from state to state. That is, in flip-flops, the output depends only on its state, not on the input. We can change the state of the flip-flop by changing the inputs, and thus by changing the state, the output changes too. Now, we're going to look at a type of circuits where the output depends on the present inputs and on the past behavior of the circuit. These circuits are called sequential circuits. When we use a clock to control the operation of these circuits, we call it sy synchronous sequential circuit. When we don't use a clock, it is called a synchronous sequential circuit. We can also call these type of circuits finite state machines because the behavior can be represented by a finite number of state states, that is, flip-flop states. These machines are used to control the operation of physical systems like vending machines, traffic lights, and safe boxes. The general structure of finite state machines is composed of an input logic circuit block, the flip-flops, and an output logic circuit block. It has a set of primary inputs and a set of outputs, and also one or more flip-flops. The store values in the flip-flops represent the state of the circuit. The input logic circuit receives A and Q as inputs and produces a set of outputs that will be fed to the flip-flops. Then, the flip-flops change their state as determined by the combinational input logic circuit. That way, the circuit can move from state to state. The flip-flop use have to be edge trigger so that only one transition from one state to another occurs during one clock cycle. The number of flip-flops in the machine will be dependent on the number of states needed to implement the desired functional behavior. The output or outputs of the FSM are given by another combinational circuit. The output logic circuit can receive as inputs the Q and A. When only Q is used, the FSM is called more tight. In this case, the output or outputs of the fine state machine are dependent on the current state of the circuit only. When Q and also A, which are the primary inputs, are used, the fine state machine is called millitype. In this case, like I said, the output of the FSM is dependent on the current state and also on the primary input. Okay. Here we can see the different structures for the more and the melee type machines. In the top, you can see that the primary inputs are not fed to the output logic. In the melee type, in the below diagram, the primary inputs are fed to the output circuits, as you can see in the red uh, wiring. So what are the design steps? So we first design a state diagram. It will be different for the more type and the melee type. Next, we do a state table. Step three will be the state assignment and the state assign table. Step four is the derivation of output logic. Step five is the choice of the flip-flop and the in flip-flop input table. And Finally, we can derive the input logic. First, we start by understanding the behavior of the physical system and the specifications for the FSM that we wish to design. Once that is clear, we start by drawing a diagram representing the function of the FSM. We derive these states by first selecting a starting point. Then we look at all the possible input values and add new states as needed. We then create a state table from the diagram, okay? In step three, we decide the number of flip-flops that we will be using. Then we assign the state values to each of the states in our diagram. We can then create a state assigned table. 
there are many different state assignments possible for the same sequential circuit. We then derive and design the output logic. We can use k-maps or combinational circuits, blocks like the multiplexers and encoders. In this step four, uh, we can also do it after the input logic is derived. We then need to select the flip-flop types that we're going to use, whether JK or D or T flip-flops, and we can create a flip-flop input table. We also call this flip-flop input table excitation table. Finally, we can derive the input logic circuit. Again, we can use the K-maps or we can use combinational circuit blocks. Well, this is all I have for you in this video. These are the design steps for a fine state machine. I actually have examples for you, but they will be in separate videos.